source of the River Twyver is up on the steep slopes of the Cotswold Escarpment and from there it flows down through farmland and through Upton St Leonard's before it passes under the M5 and on into the urban centre of Gloucester. When it gets to Abbeydale it splits into two and one channel flows down into the River Severn while the other joins the Sudbrook and then goes on into the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal. Climate change is making the UK warmer and wetter and we're likely to see more extreme and frequent weather events in the future. The area which the Twyver and the Sudbrook drains has over 600 properties which are at risk of flooding. There's no simple fix for reducing this flood risk, but it's really important that we look at the whole of the river catchment right from its source when we consider what we can do to help. One of the things that can help is to use natural flood management techniques in the upper parts of the river system. And this is designed to slow down the flow of water, to hold water back and to reduce the amount of sediment that enters those watercourses during heavy rainfall. So we at the Environment Agency have been working with Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust and Gloucester City Council to install these measures at the top end of the catchment. So the problems of flooding in Gloucester are well documented. We tend to make the national, national news often when the Severn goes over, but that's not really an issue. The main issue is the small streams and, uh, and brooks that flow off the Cotswolds. They come in through Gloucester and uh, can go out of bank and can cause really quite serious uh, flooding problems uh, in the suburbs around Gloucester. So we keep a partnership working. It allows uh, the various uh, organisations to work together and do what they're best at. So in this particular sort of partnership arrangement, uh, Gloucester Wildlife Trust, they're doing a lot of the, uh, the hard work out in the Cotswolds, creating little interventions which slow the flow, and they are probably best suited to do that. Natural flood management is also known as a nature-based solution, which means that the work delivered is supported by nature and it also increases resilience within the environment and engineers habitat diversity. There is not a one-size-fits-all approach to natural flood management. Rather, there is a range of measures that can be used within a landscape. There are three main ways that natural flood management helps to reduce flood risk. The first way is by increasing surface flow roughness. This means that NFM measures help to slow the movement of water through the landscape. The second way is by increasing opportunities for attenuation, which means holding back water within a catchment. And lastly, NFM helps to reduce flooding by increasing infiltration. Good soil management practices and tree planting help water to more easily permeate into the ground. Natural flood management works with nature, not against it. Leaky dams help to create habitats and food sources which are important for a range of species such as aquatic invertebrates, plants and fungi. Over time, NFM measures will help to improve water quality which will improve in-stream habitat for wildlife. When we fell trees by the bankside in order to create leaky dams, this helps to allow sunlight to reach the watercourse and its banks. This will then promote the growth of marginal vegetation which again is a further source of habitat and food sources for a range of species. And here we have fields which are really too small to be economic to fence. We're on the clay here, we're below the line of the Cotswold brash, which means it's great to maintain water levels in the summer, but in the winter it gets very slippery and the stock really aren't very keen on staying here. So as a result of that we've been scouting around for uh, other things to do. We've been thinking about um, planting some trees and then the Gloucester Wildlife Trust came along and started telling us about this plan for natural flood management in the catchment area above Upton St Leonard's and so in the end this is not exactly a hard decision. Clearly we're all being pushed these days to do our bit um, for climate change. Planting trees seems to be the one thing that people like me can do in a, a, to be constructive in this area. So this is the bit that we can do for climate change and if that also is done in conjunction with the natural flood management plan so that it ties in with that, so it helps to slow the flow um, when we do get peak water events, then it seems like a complete no-brainer to me. This was win, win, win and we're very pleased with all the work that's been done. Natural flood management often involves installing leaky dam structures in watercourses, particularly above locations that are prone to flooding. It's the accumulative effect of many of these structures in the headwater streams that help reduce the peak in flow uh, during uh, heavy inundation events. These structures, like the one I'm standing next to, are using natural material 
and they have an envelope underneath. You can see this one was installed in the, uh, in the, in the winter of 2018, 2019. There have been lots of heavy rainfall events since that time, but we do ha still have the original envelope that we call for normal flow to pass underneath. So anything traveling upstream, wildlife wise is unimpeded. However, when a lot of water comes down, it backs up against this structure and fills uh, either the, the channel earlier that is behind it or spills out into the narrow floodplain that we sometimes have up in these headwater streams. One of the important things about this catchment based approach are landowners. Without their support with this project, it's very difficult to get interventions done. We need to work closely with the local farming and landowner community because it is important that we have their buy-in because the majority of work is done on their land. By working with landowners, we can identify where these nature-based solutions are, are most appropriate. Therefore, the work is carried out within the Stroud District area and this is what benefits the people of Gloucester. These nature-based solutions are important in a changing world with climate change. We need to be working with nature going forward rather than fighting against it. And the work we're doing here is at the forefront of those nature-based solutions. Finally, I'd like to thank our partners in this project, Gloucester City Council, the Environment Agency and Stroud District Council. And a big thank you goes out to the farmers that we have worked with.